here we go week number two is looking to be an absolute banger as we start with bisu versus shine i'm going to bring up the score on the screen sharp light rush bisu mini mighty action jadong shine lots of big names this week mighty the only one who's like a tourist a guest here everybody else is like a, a round of four round of eight finalist in the ssl pretty insane yeah no this is probably the strongest lineup we've seen in a long time like you say mighty a little bit of the weak cog in the machine here but be so many very potent players maybe they can carry it for the protoss squad this time around yeah, I really like this Zerg lineup. I mean, it's always nice to have Soul Key in there. He's obviously the best right now. But Shine, Jadong, they've been showing some amazing gameplay recently. And, yeah. you know, bringing us to some awesome, awesome games. Shine, especially, has been carrying in the uh, KCM. But Jadong has actually been showing up really, really big lately, and he's one of the few Zergs in the SSL right now. Yeah, there's actually really hardly any Zergs in the SSL. There's like so many Terrans going into it. We'll have to see how that all pans out once all the, the group stages are done. Uh, but yeah, like Action, Jadong, and Anshine, very talented Zerg players. I'm happy to see all three of them. Uh, actions um he's not had like the most amazing performance as of late in like recent seasons but he still can hold his own so the Zerg squad is pretty strong and the uh, sharp light rush is a crazy squad as well I'm, I'm, i can't really tell who's gonna come out on top here just from the squads alone maybe a slight edge to the terran squad here i'm not too sure about that but yeah going into game number one with bisu and shine i'm curious to see if shine's going to go anything crazy this game he looks like he's just not over pull into expand right now so far bisu did a pretty good job of delaying this hatchery as much as possible still getting the block there oh he doesn't quite get it there but delayed it just a few seconds so slight edge going to bisu and he was able to start that nexus before the forge as well and there's no real room here for shine to punish i don't think that's going to be really hard to punish. You know, Minstrel uh, is a new map. I think Bisu has already worked it out completely, though, uh, making sure that he won't take any damage from uh, links that might be coming across the map. And with only two links popping out, probably not even going to try to do any sort of run by here as Shine. Bisu might be able to get away with one cannon after Nexus first, which is just such a big advantage. Uh, no. in this matchup it's so strong to have that very quick nexus you're gonna have right. your quicker gas you're gonna have uh, basically everything hopped up by about like 20 seconds yeah there's no drone scout as well because it, even though it's a one player one versus one map it's kind of cross spawn so it takes a long time for this overlord to actually come in here and confirm what the choice of opening was for the protoss as well so it's going to be very difficult for uh shine to be able to punish this at least in the uh, early stages of the game so bisu kind of getting away with a little bit of early game economic murder and it's going to probably set him up quite nicely oh yeah for sure bisu feeling very good right now and that overlord scouting he sees the wall he hasn't seen the nexus just yet so he doesn't know that this is nexus first but i don't think there's any real difference in what he can do to play a hydroden right away hmm so he's actually going to try and bust this potentially or is he just going yeah. to just push the wall uh only well, two lings in the front how can he block the probe it's so low but bisu should be able to get in with just two lings defending i mean if he gets in and sees this, he's just going to be able to counter it easily. Yeah, but the probe's already really low HP. I don't think he's going to be able to get this probe in. He's going to have to rely on the Zealot coming in here. And if, uh, I mean, if Shine's not playing super greedy, he should have made an extra pair of lings or two uh, in just a moment here. Around 19 supply, you would expect the, the Zealot threat to need to be dealt with. But because of the opening from Bisu, it's actually a little bit slower than that. So it seems like he is kind of geared into the fact that this was a, an earlier Nexus, just based on the fact that he has delayed making additional lings so long. So it seems like he's kind of clued into what Bisu's gone for this game. And yeah, I'm not too sure if this is going to be a committed Hydra bust or if he's just going to do a little bit of a fake, try and take out the wall and then transition from there. And that's going to be the aim of the game for Bisu to try and figure that out. Has got 
these additional pair of Zerglings to zone out this uh, healthier probe that's, come, that's cycled back in to try and get scouts. Still not able to get any information gleaned here. Uh, tries to get around these lings now. If he can get this probe to be huge, but I don't think he's going to get to the ramp in time. So I think still going to be denied this precious scouting information. If he sees the like, Hydralis coming out of one of these eggs or something, that would be a great tell. So if he can just hover around a little bit and try and figure this out, it would be great. But there's some additional lings coming down from the third base now to really shut down his probe. This is quite a lot of links. There's also information being gleaned here by Bisu. The number of links and the lack of link speed is a pretty no. big tell. Uh, some players, some Zerg players, will actually go for uh, link speed as well, just to try and sell this a little bit more as a normal right. macro play. But that's not the case here for Shine. He's going to have a hard time hiding this. And we've already got another cannon on the way. Hydras are heading across the map here on Minstrel. It's a pretty quick rush distance when it comes to ground. It's a pretty straight shot across the map. And there it goes. He sees the Hydras coming. I think these cannons are going to be okay on, on time here. He's got three zealots, four zealots actually. He hasn't wasted even a single zealot. So that's going to factor into how quickly this bus can happen as well. Right, we see a fourth hatchery being made, so it looks like the transition's already going to be coming underway. We'll be seeing probably, I, I wouldn't say like the bare minimal amount, and he'll probably try and do some damage here and go. He's trying to get this target tar tar the cannon down. If he can get away from these zealots without taking too many losses, maybe he can still get the forge here, or at least this pylon at the bottom, put a little bit of pressure on, but I doubt he's going to be committing to this. I imagine we're going to be seeing a bit of a transition out here from Shine. I guess it's possible he might do a follow-up bust. He might he might try and weaken the position and do a follow-up bust with just a four hatch Hydra behind this, but I'm not seeing that. I think it might be more and more likely that we'll see a big transition out of Shine in the coming moments here, and just trying to sell Bisu on making as much defense as possible while also killing this uh, wall at the front. Getting this forge and gateway will be a pretty big win shutting down this uh, upgrade timing here, which shouldn't have finished up by now. Yeah, he definitely stopped that upgrade. I'm even gonna check. Oh, he's jumping forward again. Gonna get another cannon. He's putting on a lot of pressure to Bisu. Two cannons go down. How many more Hydras are coming up? There's only three behind this. He's going to get another cannon. Well, he's not actually making more Hydras behind this. I don't think he is. I believe he's making drones. So this is a lot of pressure to Bisu right now. It's going to force out a lot more cannons, but I don't think it's a real commitment. Oh my god, imagine if he was rallying Speedlings or Hydras behind this. He might actually be able to just straight up win. He's going to dive on another cannon. <gasps> Did Bisu walk the line a little bit too close? I think he I might think so. have just not built enough defenses here. And Shine identifies that. He gets in. He kills so many cannons and a ton of probes. These other three cannons will finish up. But now Bisu is light years behind. A few more Hydras coming forward, but I think it's too late now. Zealots yeah. have that speed, and like four Zealots can pump out at, a, at, at the same time. Or no, there's only two gateways here in the natural. Is there anything in the main? No, just two gateways ways in the natural so two at a time should be enough for Bisu to hold on he's not gonna die right now but he's just taking a lot of damage and this transition is looking very strong for shine wow there's no drones at the third base okay is he actually yeah. just gonna keep going with this it's kind of wild yeah, I think he identified that he had to commit with the four hatch Hydra timing, which was, which was my first assumption, but I kind of second second guessed myself. But I, I guess this is actually the play that he wanted to go for, um, or maybe he identified that the, the the defensive timing of BC was weak enough that he had to commit to this and punish us right here, right now. There is enough zealots to soak at the front. That's buying BC very valuable seconds and getting up these additional cannons. And the Corsair sees that there's no drones at this third base, so BC is very well aware if he could just hold on here as cost efficiently as possible, he's going to be in a great position. But so far, there's kind of like a bit of a like a juxtaposition here as like still shine picking away at these cannons on the southern threshold of that line so he's getting a pretty good trade with these cannons but slowly but surely Bisu is keeping them at bay it's just that there's more and more rallied hydras coming in without the transition into later tech it's gonna be a little bit difficult um for shine to do too much uh for, for very much longer so he needs to get something done right here right now with the units he's got before storm becomes relevant it's gonna be a long time before that temporary archives is finished with storm research so there's probably like a window of like a minute and a half two minutes here for shine to try and close out this game or at the very least maybe consider setting up a contain here and uh, maybe going into a lurker transition but you might be thinking about a kill move which is what Bisu is assuming here that's why we see so many cannons being thrown down the lair's going down at the third lair starts uh drones are being pumped out now i feel like this transition is too late now 
Um, yeah. The Zealot speed came in just in time, and you can see what a difference it makes in holding on against the Hydras running forward and trying to gun down cannons. The Zealots can just get there immediately, start to hit those Hydras and add that damage on. They die so much quicker, and things just kind of falling apart here for Shine. Can he try to right the ship here? Get something going uh, in terms of economy because, you know, all that damage that was done to Bisu early on, all those probe kills, they don't really mean much anymore. He's been pumping away on two right. next side for quite some time. And during all that time, Shine was not really producing drones. So the good position that we saw Shine having a little bit earlier uh, has kind of been thrown to the wayside here. And with those Templar out now, Storm is going to be relevant. This is going to have to be a contain. There's not really an option of breaking through anymore. Yeah, basically, he's, um, Shine's best hope is that Bisu made too many cannons and slowed down um, the force that's required to break out of the contain. The only issue is is that this transition into um, Lair is just a little bit on the slower side. I see a Spire coming down as well. That's going to be very potent. Maybe if he can just catch a few of these observers with some Scourge and deny any vision from Bisu, maybe he can get the contain going, but it's going to be a little bit of time before the Lurker tech is finished. He can actually do a proper solid contain here. It's going to be mainly just Hydras setting up the soft contain, hoping for the best it will be a lot of storm dodging required here high temple is moving out into position i hope that um shine's gonna be ready for this okay pretty good storm dodge pretty good storm dodge so so far so good could be morphing that into an arcana there's only a couple of high templars behind this so shine's actually thinking about pulling the trigger on this he should be wary though should probably pull back here right here right now doesn't want to force the issues so many cannons here you don't want to give any value to these cannons you want to force these to be dead weight and killed off by bisu later just to get his unit flow out so he can break out of the contain later yeah, losing any units to those cannons right now is such a pain for Shine. He has managed to re-drone quite well. He's got a reasonable economy going right now, but his tech is so far behind. His upgrades are behind. Everything is behind right now. And, I mean, we might be having lurkers come up soon. We might have a big wave of Muta. It's uh, really up to Shine and how he wants to play this next step. He's still got the containment here, but if he starts to morph eggs right out in front of the natural, Bisu might see that and just go for the kill, try to push out. You have to kind of hide it here, and he's going to make Mutas. Oh, this is actually what okay. I was thinking. Muta is a pretty good option. It doesn't leave that room for punishing that Bisu would have if you try to make a Lurker contain out in front of this right now. Right, and it's going to force even more cannons out of Bisu. That's another two cannons minimum going down in the main base. Maybe another one or two in the, the natural, depending on the positioning. But at the very least, there's going to be really annoying here for Bisu, because uh, even this, this one Corsair is going to be chased down, and uh, it's going to be a long time before we'd ever have um, six Corsairs out to, to deal with Scourge and what have you. So he's probably going to be relying mainly on this Dragoon Templar Archon for anti-air while pushing out here. Not only three Dragoons, so as long as he can just avoid this Archon. The Muta can kill uh, the Archon uh, with good micro, but it doesn't look like that's even going to be required. Just some good positioning and storm dodging is all that's required to get a lot of value out of these um, Mutalisks. A lot of juice already being squeezed out of the orange here for Shine. With pretty minimal investment of three cannons in the main base, is going to be able to keep these um, Mutas at bay but just one or two high templar snipes could spell disaster here yeah flying right over top of these probes Ooh, a storm goes down on some of the probes there it does quite a bit of damage but quite a bit of damage to the economy as well now only six mutas remain will shine recommit to mutas is he gonna make another wave Try to snipe some Templar. He hasn't really killed any Templar so far. And the pure Hydra is going to struggle against what we got here. Four, five storms. Oh, drones coming to the front. He's kind of messed this up. He's coming in with those just those six mutas that remain. But even... Oh, God. There's the Lurkers. Ah, uh, this is a big, big headache for Shine. He snipes one Templar on the way out, but that cost him dearly. Shine not able to hold that containment, and Bisu moved out at the perfect timing there to punish. Yeah, he's opened up this map completely for himself. It's going to be almost impossible for Shine to reset up a contain like that now. He's going to have to run with his tail between his legs. See if he can get some of these um, Templars while the army's in transition. May get this Templar uh, pretty good, but does trade off the Muirs for it. 
And he's still worried about the amount of Zealots here because he was forced back from Morphing Lurkers. There's not even Lurkers back at home to deal with this Zealot Flood that's coming in. It's going to be a little bit annoying here for Shine to kind of clean up back at home. And it looks like the Zealots are getting pretty good surround on these um, Hydras as well while the rest of the army is coming in to reinforce. So these Lurkers are a little bit out of position now with the Dragoons now on top of them. It's going to be a bit awkward. Uh, I don't think there's any detection here. Okay, there is an Observer right there. I thought the Observer got sniped off me, but this actually means that Bisu pretty much wins the game here. He's going to be just tapping out. GG. Really early victory on the board for the Protoss squad here, so... Phew. Bam. That's rough. We saw, B we saw Bisu win in similar fashion on this map. It seems like he likes to just run it down the mid, depend not regardless of the phase of the game against Zerg. Like, wherever it's like early, mid, late, he seems to love running it down mid against Zerg. It's very, it's, it feels like a, a long distance, right? The Overlord takes a long time to get over there, but it's a pretty quick rush down the middle. It doesn't take yeah. long to get across that map. Yeah. Well, there's no slowdown. I mean, if you were more, if there was a, a, a more potent Muta threat and you were more worried about um, Templar snipes on the, the transfer or uh, there was a lurker field already established so you had to like more tentatively push across bridges and what have you it'd be a different story but yeah the, the tempo was just way too much in Bisu's favor there uh, I can't really blame Shine I think it was like kind of necessary to pull the trigger on committing to the four hatch it just didn't go his way sending out light here for set number two we are on deja vu with Bisu spawning top right light in bottom right Kind of a wild game, that last one. A little bit sad to see Shine go out so early, but Bisu played a hell of a game. Yeah, that's for, that's for certain. I saw him, like, min-maxing his, um, and hedging his bets a lot that game. We saw a lot of, like, couple of cannons made, couple of cannons cancelled here and there, like, really trying to figure out just the right, um, formula to hold off the aggression from Shine, and managed to calculate that almost flawlessly while still, uh, preserving enough economic powerhouse to push out and get everything steamrolling before the lurkers were positioned correctly. Yeah, every, everything was just firing all cylinders at FBC, but I can't fault Shine for going for the four hatch play. It did kind of make sense with the way the game was lining up, so valiant effort, but unfortunately was thwarted here. And now Bisu, the current king of the hill, going to be taking on light. Uh, on this map, it's a little bit weird. I mean, it's, you know, it's only these 12 bases besides this one base in the center here. I'm not sure if that'll ever be taken too often, but in this matchup, it, it can be taken as a fourth base for Terran. Uh, yeah, with this uh, center, it, I don't know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit awkward uh, in some regards, especially with this like low to high transitions uh, from the the, the the third base to the center and what have you, and the rally point to the center. It can be a little bit tricky uh, pushing as Terran if Pearls are abusing these high ground slopes as you're advancing. For sure, and the difficulty of taking the third base here can't really be understated. You've got yeah. high ground all the way along that pathway uh, to your third base that the Protoss can just come running down uh, to try and break your lines and I think that's okay for the current meta it would be very hard to play this map if you're trying to play say two years ago Terran versus Protoss with the, 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 prev the prevalence of like up mech and just constant upgrading it would be yeah. really really hard to play on this map but you know, we might be able to see, you know, some six factory play, some, you know, really low econ, uh, low upgrade style from light to just get in there and deal some damage to, to put the pressure on Bisu while maybe trying to take that third base behind the push. Um, I think that's probably the best way forward here, and that's probably what we'll end up seeing from Light. Yeah, maybe it's going to be a bunker expand to start things off with. Range just started for Bisu. Uh, there's a possibility here that um, he may cancel this range to squeeze out the Nexus a little bit quicker. We'll have to wait and see. But he hasn't elected to probe scout or anything, so he may not even get a chance to cancel that. And almost like he's thinking about maybe trying to block a, a Nexus that can't even be made yet. If he, if he didn't have the range, he could have placed down the Nexus, which is why he tried to go for this block here. But because Bisu took the range, he hasn't even got the minerals quite yet anyway. So this works out a little bit favorably for Bisu because he kind of wastes a tiny bit of Light's minerals here for no fruit. But uh, yeah, going to be getting this sort of like um, 
pretty quick um, Nexus as a follow-up, but I, I, if, if Light doesn't really have to pay much of a tax here and doesn't really get punished for doing this, I, I can't help but feel there's a slight Terran advantage. Well, there's still a lot of play here. First, the bunker comes down, factory in the main. Will he follow up with a starport? What kind of aggression are we going to see out of Light? Because he is well known for this kind of drop style. Right. Um, I'm not too sure if it works as well with these positions. I, I have a feeling, I don't know, I'm just getting a feeling in my gut that he won't go for it in these positions. Um, I just, I, in my mind, my star senses are tingling and they're telling me that Bisu would easily thwart the, the Vulture drop attempt if it was attempted. Oh, we're going to be catching this SUV. It's a nice little uh, pickup here from Bisu. Any denied vision is pretty good early on. Uh, it is really good if you can get into the main base um, with an SUV to confirm what's going on. It's very rare to do that because it's kind of like Protoss 101 to never let um, a Vulture get into a ramp early game. So you would kind of expect them to also do the same with an SUV at this phase. But uh, sometimes you do get the SUV in and uh, get a bit of a free scout. And um, because you don't really have an early scan in this matchup, it, it can be very valuable to get that. But... Now we're going to be playing a little bit of tax to the Protoss player for going for this bunker expand, which is uh, to be expected. Yeah, he has to pay that tax, and he also has to prepare for everything here. So the catch-all from Light going to be that eBay. I should be getting mines pretty soon as well. First couple of tanks going to start to pop out. And he'll be preparing for DT's Reaver. He has no idea what's coming here. He'll have to... Uh, make sure that he's got a little bit of a turret ring. Good good news is that it's not too hard to make that turret ring on this map. It's not uh, like Dominator or anything like that where there's plenty of right. surface area. There's a very minimal surface area uh, in this main base on Deja Vu. The natural can be covered by like one to two turrets. The main like two to three. Uh, and you're, you're going to be pretty well off. You're going to be in a pretty good spot. I like uh, hiding underneath the barracks here with that tank he's putting it under the barracks pushing forward and it makes it very hard for bisu to actually target that if he wants to try and dive he's got four dragoons but it's a little bit of a risk if he wants to try and get on that because a misclick could cost him a lot oh yeah absolutely um one of the things i would like to see terrans abuse more um against uh, the early pressure of pros um it's, it's, it's a very old school thing to do, but you don't actually see pros utilize it nearly as much um, anymore. I, I love to see it. Uh, do you think... Um, I, I actually agree with the fact that Light in this game is playing a very cookie cutter style and isn't trying to do anything fancy like a, a vulture drop or anything. I think this was like 100% the right choice from uh, Light here in this game. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Look, we've got some scouts over on that right-hand side. I, I kind of like it when you can go directly to the natural uh, for the, the pro, for the Protoss player. Like, you could fly straight through, drop two vultures in the natural, and then drop two in the main. But, yeah, we do have a scout over there on the center right. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It might be a pylon, uh, just for yeah. confirming anything uh, flying through. Or... Um, yeah, just seeing when that third base might be coming down. Light actually getting in here with some vultures now. Uh, checking things out and, you know, laying down some mines. Kind of causing some panic for Bisu. And at the same time, he's pushing across the map with a pretty strong attack. There's quite a few marines in the front. Only four right now, but a lot of vultures here rallying forward. The mines are being placed very nicely. And the high ground will be captured. Does he have siege mode finished? He's just kind of pushing in. He runs into the natural. This is getting really bad for Bisu. Oh boy, but he might lose quite a few tanks on the retreat. I don't see any mines behind this to actually help with the uh, escape of these tanks. And Bisu might be able to track these down. He didn't get a lot of damage in the natural either. So if he loses any of these tanks, it's going to be super painful. Let's see if he can get any. I have a feeling you might get at least one tank here, maybe two. I think Lights realized that. He's going to have to try and like bite the bullet and just take the trade here. Yeah, look, two, like two tanks are going to be falling, which was a little bit to be expected. Now Bisu has a bit of a counterattack opportunity here, trying to pin down this one tank. It can't retreat to the safety of its natural expansion, trying to instead buy time uh, for defenses. But it looks like Bisu is going to be just ignoring the tank um, with all but two Dragoons and instead try and go for a bit of a pressure at the front here. There's not actually any tank to defend, and there's nothing in the bunker. 
This is crazy. He might even just break through and kill him right now. He might try to be okay if he can sit these two tanks seized up on the high ground. But there's a bit of luck factor here. Maybe Beast can get some good trades. He's going to try and run up the ramp. The SCV drill's coming in. Two SCVs break off to block off two of the Dragoons, but the other two make it on top of the tanks. So both of those tanks are going to fall. The SCVs will pro probably do a reasonable job of cleaning up a couple of these Dragoons, but it's very annoying right now for Light to stabilize against this. A little bit of a critical damage being done to the Terran player in the mid game phase. Meanwhile, Bisu happily churning away on three bases and going to be transitioning into a bit of Reva tech to further add insult to injury and have more slowdown potential, making it even more harder for Light to take his third. Oh, this is such a sick trade for Bisu. He's killed so many tanks here, and even though he's losing all of these Dragoons, he is able to produce so many more Dragoons than Light is able to produce tanks. He's only got two add-ons. That's really all he can afford. And Bisu is now with three bases. He's probably going to take a fourth, and there's really no way for Light to push anytime soon, so he can just go ahead and take as much of the map as he wants. This was a serious overextension in that attack from Light. I thought he had a pretty reasonable chance of uh, taking a good trade uh, once he split those two groups of Dragoons uh, apart and started to clean them up, but... He didn't retreat fast enough with the tanks, and he didn't have mines to retreat to, uh, which right. was the major problem. He kind of gambled all his mines on uh, dealing some damage and throwing them down right in the face of the Dragoons, rather than setting them up preemptively to try and retreat to. This is uh, not going to work out too well for Bisu, but man, did that first attack work well. He is in such a good position. Light is... Like, just completely choked. There's yeah. hardly any way to, to, to break this man now. It's going to be such an uphill battle if he manages to win this game. Well, absolutely. We got an on-curve fourth base, fourth base being taken at um, 10 minutes. And it's going to be this top left quadrant here. He can, if he wants to, he can set up some gateways to make that even harder for um, Light to assault later on. But that might even come in, into play. It might just be... Bisu able to delay this third and eventually steamrolling the game without any challenge this fourth base a able to be levied. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a gambit from Light. He's going to try and like churn out on six factories, see if he can get something going, see if he can get a push going here. Um, slowly shuffling his way up to this ridge line. Maybe he wants to use this six fact to try and push so that he can also take this third base and slowly turn this game around. It's going to be an uphill battle, like you say. I'm um, not really liking his chances, but I guess if anyone can do it, someone like like Light could maybe maybe eventually turn this game around, but it's looking bleak at the moment. Isu is just playing so well. Uh, cleaning up that first attack with just pure Dragoon, hardly any tools for him available to make that hold possible, but now he's got Reavers, he's got Zealots, he's got Drops. I mean, he everything is in his favor right now. 40 supply advantage. Isu is set up, he's ready for this attack, and the 6 factory that I anticipated is going to come across the map. It's just way later and with way less tanks than it should have. Right. Yeah, and there's going to be a little bit of pressure to the back line here. A small contingency of Protoss cutting off uh, rallied reinforcements while he's trying to use what he's got left to dive bomb onto the tank line with some Zealots. Not the best of bombs, though. This is probably one of the best case scenarios for Light thus far in this trade. It's just that also... Oh, he's actually done a pretty good job of cleaning up these um, units that were sent to intercept reinforcements. So, all things considered, not the most worst case scenario for Light, but he is still being whittled down to a nub just by the sheer mass of Bisu right now. And eventually this tank line will be overrun with the utility of the shuttles and reavers and even getting some good mind drags on the final few units that are out on the field right now. It's not looking super great, although the supplies do tell a little bit of a different story. A very small gap right now of just like 15 or 18 supply while Light is taking this third base. Maybe it's going to be a little bit difficult for Bisu to field an army large enough to challenge this third base now and it looks like there's going to be a very forward position set up from Light wanting to control this little choke point leading between the bases rather than setting up back at home trying to keep uh, as far forward as possible and uh, even some vultures pressuring this top left to shut down um, the fourth base coming up it's actually a bit of a big win here for Light it adds a lot of um, depth to this game now that this, this fourth base is not going to be coming online and uh, we're taking this third maybe things can turn around for Light here it's just going to be 
still a bit of a slog because, as we can see, the supplies now really do start to show that 40 supply gap once again. So even though there's not going to be a massive power of uh, economy here for Bisu, he's still going to be able to put a lot of pressure on, already delaying this third and, and being really annoying here for like... Yeah, that uh, attack went about as well as you could possibly imagine for Light. Everything right. kind of went wrong for Bisu. Like, the, the kills with the... Goliath were fantastic just sniping those shuttles as they were coming in and you know, Bisu's not in as good of a position as he was before but that was basically all that Light could hope for. He couldn't hope to win the game with that push. There's just way too much mass but the train was reasonable enough that the game gets to continue on and with this third base coming online and the delays, the heavy delays to the fourth of yeah. Bisu, it's still not a great position for Light, but it's absolutely playable. Um, that engagement on the high ground, you know, this map really playing a big factor. Now, Bisu's going to try and push down this uh, peninsula, this high ground, dropping on top of these tanks, doing a really good job with the Zealots. There's still so many units here to deal with. There's a lot of vultures mixed in. And if he targets correctly on the dragoons, there's really not many of them left. So I think that in the end, Light will be able to push this back. But that was, again, a full reset of all the tanks of Light's army. He's still got some vultures left, which he can push forward with and maybe lay some mines, maybe challenge this uh, rally point. There are the Templar, though, now. Bisu is continuing to grow and he's continuing to... Uh, get more tank out here as well. If you could snipe these Templar, it would be a really big exchange, but he's actually going to go for a drop over towards the 12 o'clock, and there's only one cannon there, plus the pylon wall. He could deal a lot of damage in this position. Oh, and there's the Templar. This is the big move right here. Killing off these Templar is insane. Three Templar go down, four Templar just fall. Dropping some of these Dragoons over here to try and save the probes. He is going to be able to clean this up. This is a really good heads up play from Bisu, but he just lost a massive part of his advantage. Yeah, a lot of utility just went down the drain right now, and those storms may have been uh, critical in the coming phases. Vulture still applying pressure. Now the wave of Dragoons came out. He almost caught his pants down there with the Zealot and Templar round of units coming out, and just pure Vulture left on the field, able to take advantage of that small window. One thing to be said for Bisu is that um, Light's going to be stuck on 1-1 one -one upgrades for another minute or two, so there is a, the upgrades for Terran are going to be a little bit behind schedule this game, so maybe Bisu can keep trading well as the time goes on, but being denied mining at this third base, so long and had that much damage done to the amount of uh, high templates he's got and stuff it's, it's honestly almost enough damage to really bring light back into this game especially with that fourth base being delayed about two or three minutes these delays are so massive a fourth base coming up for light um just slowing down this economy at all and still slowing down the top left hand corner it's just now getting mining with a few probes yeah. It's crazy how much light has done with so little. He's managed to bring this one back, and Bisu's... I, I mean, he's going to be kicking himself if he loses this game. You'd think so, yeah. I mean, I'm sure someone like Bess maybe would have found a way of just bowling light over by now, but Bisu, even though he was looking pretty strong, not quite able to do um, what he wanted there, and wasn't quite able to execute and get the job done, and now it looks like light kind of unhindered can just grow like wildfire, already going up to four bases against the four bases of Bisu. is kind of crazy. You can't fight this as Protoss, um, it's not sustainable. You always want to be one base ahead of the, the Terran, and sometimes even when you're two bases ahead of the Terran, it's not like you're just going to win the game for free. Pretty good attempt at a storm drop here, but one of the high devils dies to a mine, so only one storm going to be uh, able to activate, and that means only like, just a few kills there, so not really getting the kind of damage done to Light that is required to kind of reset the flow of the game. So right now, Light definitely in a bit of a commanding position, I would say. We talked earlier about the difficulties uh, in the early game for Terran on this map, but as things go later, I, I really do feel like it's more of a Terran favored uh, situation here on Deja Vu. You have this yeah, huge high ground ring. Uh, as you spread out around the map, there's so many different areas that you can hold with tanks. It's very hard to break up these high grounds. Right. Um, the positions get well established. As the positions get well established, you can just hold this high ground on the left hand side and you can kind of secure all three bases uh, on the left. There's not a lot of pathways to 
kind of counterattack as Bisu. He just needs to stretch out over to this location right on screen. And he will start to do that now. Sending tanks that direction. He's going to try and hold this fourth base. Bisu really needs to break this now if he wants to uh, swing the advantage back in his favor. But I don't think he'll be able to with all these tanks on the... Uh, far side how are you going to be able to break that position that's yeah. just a crazy it, difficult spot to get into yeah you need like three or four shuttles dropping zealots on the back line of tanks to have any kind of hope of coming down into that bridge area and actually securing a bust and look at this another slowdown coming in here just being super annoying all game long is light and that's exactly what you have to be doing to come back into the game you don't want to be the one that's on the receiving end you want to be the one that's causing problems for your opponent to worry about which gives you room to breathe you want to grow while applying pressure and now look at this the bisu's army naturally just came up here even though it was even unable to get up into that high ground area to defend now let's give a lot more oxygen here for um, the terran to start circulating and he's going to be coming into this center pocket like i thought he might be taking the base at this center at some point is a very um a good move for terran players if you don't want to like uh, overextend and like play too wide like taking these center bases like on retro and what have you can be a great opportunity and he's taking it as his fifth rather than his fourth so he's still got a lot of gas in the bank to work with. So he's setting himself up here for an absolute powerhouse economy. And meanwhile, Bisu's been slowed down this game. Now, finally, the upgrades of Terran starting to come online. The 2-1 is finished. The 3-2 is probably on its way. But it's going to be some time for that finishes. So right now, Bisu can get some okay trading. But Terrans will outscale the Protoss inevitably. Gonna have to rely heavily on these storms. He's got plenty of Templar in those dropships. Goliath snipes are gonna be incredibly, incredibly valuable at this point in the game. He's gonna run forward with some vultures, just try to pick off a Templar or two. Does a good job of that. And he's slowly pushing into this high ground right above the natural. We don't have a lot of gateways in the top left, although that is being those are being added on now. It's gonna take a little bit of time before we can establish that. A secondary rally point and light is getting closer and closer to the natural he's secured this high ground position which we saw beast to take a bad trade in earlier that location very hard to break through and Bisu is getting chopped up. Another Templar goes down. This is such a tight little cor corridor to try and push through. Zealots are getting caught behind a lot of this. He's focusing on tr putting down the best storms possible. These are amazing storms, though. A lot of the vultures get ripped up, and now the Zealots can go to town. Jumping on top of this from multiple angles. Is this the... The attack that Bisu needs, he's bringing out the probes here as well. During the middle of this fight, he's going to transfer the probes through. Because even if he loses the fight, he'll at least have uh, those probes into a, in a new location where they can actually uh, mine from. I guess Light will hold and he's going to push back in this position while Bisu goes to mine in the top left. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think there's just not quite enough for Bisu. It's a great effort from him, but the tank line was just so deep, it went on forever. And even though Bisu did a great job of storming and coming in there with the shuttles, wasn't quite able to overcome the odds. And now with a pretty big supply lead, putting the pressure on, and without a, a strong rally point in the top left yet set up, it's going to be hard for Bisu to counter. GG finally called. And now it's looking like... Um, there's going to be a bit of an even spread here between all three teams. Like, people are like, dropping like flies left and right. I don't really know which way this uh, week's going to go, Sam. All right, with Bisu eliminated, Action will be sent out here to face off against Light next. Pantheon is the map. Action bottom left. Light top left. But, man, that uh, previous game was really opening our eyes to the difficulties of playing Protoss on that map, hey? Like, there's some difficulties yeah. for sure for Terran in the early game, but... The way that the path, uh, the ring around the middle has walls on some of the sides, it makes like interesting corridors that are difficult to right. maneuver your army through. And Light took very good advantage of that. Bisu took a lot of bad fights. I, I feel like he hasn't really uh, maybe practiced on that map enough yet. Yeah, maybe. It also seemed like he was really trying so hard to commit to preventing the third base from light and uh, really delayed his fourth base that game, unfortunately. Um, it seems like that map may be baiting Protoss players into trying to take advantage of the, the issues for Terran so much so that they kind of like push themselves into a bit of a tunnel vision and that can kind of come back to bite them. And uh, I think maybe they need to think of a little bit of a clever way of transitioning on that map to what to slow down the Terran while also 
also still being a bit greedy behind that because I, I feel like Terran can just run amok if you allow them to establish too much map control. I think I just uh, said the wrong map here for this one. I think I said Pantheon. It's actually Radeon. Just Radeon. Um, <laughs> actually going to go ahead and grab his 12 hatchery and right into a swanning pool and gas afterwards. This is looking like the most normal opener we've had. Yeah. Got a very clear pathway forward here in this TVZ. And I, I don't expect anything less from light versus action. Both these players are incredibly good late game. Um, very strong macro players. And if there was some sort of cheese early game here, I, the only thing I could expect would be like a, an 8 racks out of the light. He's been known yeah. to do that. But action is just a very solid macro player, although quite aggressive at times. He is more of a, more leaning towards that sort of economic opener. Yeah. Well, his main strength is that he's able to apply a lot of pressure while still macroing like a god behind the pressure. So he, he's aggressive, but he's he's mainly focusing on his economy behind the aggression still. So he's, he's still just going to be Prime, prime prioritizing the churning out of drones and units but with enough skill of his task switching to still micro well and apply pressure and kind of make you feel uncomfortable and it can be hard to play against a good zerg like that although light inversely has a bit of a strange style he's the kind of guy to cut scvs earlier on and go for a slightly lower economy approach to the standard game just so he can squeeze out a little bit of extra juice and go for slightly stronger timings and tvz is all about timings and sometimes Sometimes the, the windows to exploit the Zerg player in the points of transitional weakness come down to like three second windows. So sometimes having that tiny little bit of extra oomph does really help out. And someone like Light knows how to take full advantage of that. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we don't get to see uh, SCV numbers, worker numbers, uh, because this is a, a live recording of the game. So uh, we, we won't be able to tell that exactly, but I know exactly what you're talking about. 35 is when light tends to stop SCV production. And that's like the perfect number to just macro out an insane army uh, to really get your unit flow going. And uh, on two bases, put an insane amount of pressure onto Zerg so that we might see that here, although we won't be able to tell exactly how many workers there are. Yeah, uh, he does like pretty much do that almost every game. It's not like he does that some of the time. It's, it's a very, very likely trend here. And usually you'll see Terran players also try and skimp out on making the second comsat right away. So you'll see like one comsat made, then the second one a little bit later on. Because each time you make a comsat, you're, you're prevented from making SC two SCVs for each comsat you make. So two comsats, four SCVs. So if you do want to cut SCVs later, sometimes can be even more optimized to delay when you make that second comsat. So always be careful not to lose this medic. Needs to pay attention. All the damage being dealt to that medic already. There's only one medic, so it's, any damage you do to that medic is permanent for the time being so he needs to be very careful here as he navigates someone like actions really on top of things like if you, if you blink for a few times he'll find a way of uh, taking advantage of that so light needs to keep his eyes just wide open all times while he's, he's looking for a third base that doesn't exist right now i don't think he has any idea this is a 2.5 hatch he's expecting action to take the bottom right natural and maybe go for a, like a crazy zerg style or something but action's actually playing very solid two base style gonna be taking a very late third here it's got the 2.5 hatchery and you can see that there's only one comsat for light so he is saving some scan yeah. and uh, because of that he got kind of tricked he didn't or he thought that there was another base down in the bottom right um didn't have scan to try and find out about that he sends his whole army down there he's not going to lose the army or anything but he wasn't able to put on the big pressure that he wanted to in the natural still forced out two sunken Ooh. colonies action immediately in the evolution chamber this is going to be some sort of ultra rush yeah i saw that building morphing and i was like starting to get a bit excited i was thinking to myself is that an evolution chamber i really wanted the observer to click on it i knew it probably wouldn't be a hydro den at this early on in the game as a transition as well so i was pretty sure about it and yeah it looks like we're going to be seeing some very fast um, carapace upgrades to try and keep on curve with the terran and get some windows of advantage maybe to exploit later um, not only with the mutaling cleanups but also with maybe ultralisks uh, coming out and he is going to be now setting trying to set up this base 
place in the bottom right in the natural. There was a fire back there to try and get the drone, but yeah, two links made short work of that. And now he's, I, I think he's going to be wanting to expand soon. I think the drone's just now being sent out to take this third base. Seven meters coming into the natural. Can one shot those SCVs? But more pressing issue here is this marine medic force heading across the map right now. He's got to bring those mutas to bear to help out with these three sunken colonies in their defense. Action. Pulling the mutas over here to the side. He's got two more sunken colonies on the way, which should be enough for sure to hold off light. Light should just turn around when he sees that number of sunken colonies and the mutas are present as well. It would be suicide to dive into that, but now he's got a containment in the front of this base, and there's no yeah. hatchery out on the map anywhere here well, for action. Yeah, he was sending the drone out, and as soon as this push was coming across the map, he sent the drone home. So now, and he, there's no way of securing the third base right now. He's instead going to be trying to counterattack, seeing if he can open up this pocket of turrets. Both turrets may be going down. It's a great repair attempt from Light. He buys a little bit of time, but eventually both tur uh, turrets do go down, although bought enough time for some Marines to get up here. Although we can start to exploit this location a little bit now that those turrets are, are dead. This is not a strong enough Marine force to keep these mutas at bay for long. So it looks like Light will be uh, retreating back home to come and deal with this, and that should open up the map for Action to think about expanding, although he's probably feeling a little bit wary about it still. He knows Light's style is to cut SUVs, and he'll have a strong presence of bio, although with only this amount of barracks, maybe there's something that can be done here for Action. I think he should be able to expand and I just think he's very wary about it. Spending all his money right now to get into this ultraless transition, but two base ultra, it has its limitations. There's yeah. really not that much you can do with such a little amount of gas. You really can't afford all the upgrades and a bunch of ultras uh, for that timing. And he will send a drone down to bottom right. Let's see if he's able to hold this base because light is getting close to his transition into science vessel and if action can't like keep the pressure on with these mutas because the science vessel is out how is he going to be able to hold uh the base in bottom right now he comes in he kills the one turret here in the main base and he's really opened up the position now he's killed quite a few scvs so far and he's still got quite a bit of uh mutalist presence in this base killing off even more and more marines this is going very well for action the distinct lack of turrets in this main base is hurting light a lot only two more marines they both go down now he's got free reign over the scvs it's gonna have to be a pull light is starting to fall apart here with this much pressure yep. and there's only one star port so there's not like a lot of uh, irradiates going to be available to um, light soon either which would kind of flip the script a tiny bit here on action action's done a great job of putting a lot of pressure on like this game in ways which have which has slowed himself down but also very much crippled light now currently even on supply which is indicative of a pretty strong so uh position in this game uh lots of bio in position now to prevent this but it looks like we're gonna see a dive into the natural there's only four marines here not even a bunker so the links can start to go to work on the turrets open up the position maybe for the, the muas to exploit there is now a science vessel will be one irradiate uh, available to leverage soon but with some good splitting that will be mitigated the, the mule is currently dancing around in the pocket of the main base trying to get more and more economic damage he's trying to target a supply but it's a bit of a mistake there because he's going to take a little bit of extra damage onto that flock of mules on the exit but still the damage has been pretty decent in this game although light is starting to stabilize now creeping ahead by about 15 or so supply the third base for f uh, for action is just so late is maybe there's a window here for light to stabilize and get things going again but with the kite in this um upgraded ultralists coming onto the field it will be very difficult for light to have a large enough bio ball to actually gun down the ultras in time so I'm a little bit worried for light in the coming phases of the game maybe effort as your action will be able to stash up enough gas to you know have like three or four ultras just suddenly barrel in at the critical timing and with nidus canals set up as well it looks like this third base will be relatively unchallenged action's done a fantastic job here of holding light back keeping him in his base and 
Shaving off a lot of the economy, which is already, as we talked about earlier, pretty low for light in this matchup. He doesn't produce a lot of SCVs, and he's having to reproduce SCVs right now to get back up to that, uh, you know, 35 number. He's not anywhere near a third base right now, and I don't think he's going to be able to shut down this third of action. So we are going to have that ultraless transition. Just how strong is it going to be, though, with only 400 gas in the bank? Action's not going to be able to produce too many ultras. He's got four, uh, three out now. He's got the um, tightness plating on the way, I imagine. But will he wait for speed and plus two armor to finish as well? I, I feel like you kind of have to. With this low number of ultra, you, you need to have just as much oomph with this army as possible. Yeah, it depends on how Light's playing. If Light's just turtling on two bases like he is right now, you want to wait for full upgrades. Um, if Light was trying to be a little bit more aggressive, then you'd probably just wait for Kitness playing and go. Um, at this stage, it's looking like Light does want to do a timing push here. Um, we may see an engagement out on the center of the map. And like I was saying earlier, I'm a little bit worried that Light won't have enough juice in this force to gun down the Ultras quick enough. He's trying to get a, a little tactical snipe on this um, Overlord, which does give Action an opportunity. If he wants to, he can kind of try and cut this force into two and get a, a tactical wedge on it. But it looks like he doesn't want to go for a play like that. Just wants to kind of consolidate his position, squeeze out as much gas as possible. Now that his third gas is finally online, it does give another 300 a minute. So, you know, two minutes pass, that's another three Ultras that he's able to produce. So if he just waits a little bit longer, it's going to be that much harder for um, Light to come out and take a third base or put any pressure on. Muir's going to town yet again, still getting value even though there's a Radiates out on the field. The vessel that was in position doesn't have enough energy to cast anything, so it's a little bit frustrating here for Light. He's now finally got a force that's looking like it's big enough to gun down Ultras. I, I'm not too sure that he's going to be able to force a fight anytime soon, though. There's also a Nidus Canal set up. He might be able to get a cancel on this uh, fourth base coming up in the top right, but that's not actually an optimal target to choose right now. He wants to go for either the third base um, or just try and set up a container right now. It looks like he's electing toward the third base. Yeah, it's kind of a hidden base there in the uh, top right action, hoping that that won't be scouted. Light is going around it, though. He's heading down to the bottom right hand corner. Light, is he going to be able to kill this? It really looks like action is giving it up. He's just going to let that go down and go for the counter attack. Kind of a crazy move here from action. Going to give up a lot of drones with this. And Light throws down the eBay, or no, he throws down the science facility in the wall, blocking the ultras really, really well. Such a nice tactical maneuver from Light. Keeping these ultras out for some time, but now they're up inside the main base and they're going to work on the production. This is getting a little bit scary. Uh, the, the army is going to come on back home and here comes those uh, vessels, but they're going to get sniped down immediately. Unfortunately, they did manage to cast all of their spells, but getting all of those kills on the science vessels is really, really great for action here. He just can't get on top of these marines, though. They're in between the barracks, and uh, that setup is exactly meant for this situation. All of the uh, barracks right next to each other are not going to allow the ultras to get on top of that. He's going to go after the eBay targeting down one. So many SCVs fall, though, in the main base. A lot of SCVs going down in the natural as well. This is just eviscerating the economy of light. And even though there's no third base for action, I mean, this is maybe enough damage on the Terran side of things that even just pumping two gas ultra will be enough to win this game. Yeah, he's actually saved the hatchery in the bottom right no crazy. Way. And has a and has this fourth gas to start mining once he can get around to making some drones there as well. So yeah, he's gonna be firing in all cylinders, just throwing everything against the wall and seeing what sticks right now. Trying to keep light at bay. There will be a small window where light has a pretty strong critical mass of marines relative to the amount of forces of Zerg. Though so he can come out onto the map right here, right now, try and put a lot of pressure on and see if he can get a kill move with the army that he's got currently fielded. It's a pretty large army, two two upgrades, hasn't got that plus three yet. With the eBay sniped, it means he has no longevity in this game. He has to win pretty much right here, right now. The longer this game goes on, the worse it becomes for Light with the upgrade being delayed and sniped. So he's kind of banking on just winning the game with the forces he can muster right now. He's going to be able to get some radiates down on these Ultras before the uh, trade actually comes down. It's not too bad. He can gun these down. If he can avoid any losses to these Scourge as well, it's looking pretty good for Light. Um, Action might try and do a bit of a slowdown with a run-by with these two irradiate Ultras. Um, looks like Light is going to not... Um, 
um, try and go back and deal with that though. He's just going to try and uh, get between these barracks like before and just keep the onslaught going. There's seven sunkens here, so it will be a little bit difficult to break through if there's anything supporting. But if there's not that many units with two two upgrades, those marines will make short work of those sunkens. Yeah, the addition of those extra sunken colonies so smart by action. But is it going to be enough? Two more coming up? I think with these nine sunkens, that actually will represent like a, a, a difficult enough barrier for uh, Light to try and get through that he's not going to be able to break this. I like it, just putting some ultras in the front and holding, putting them on hold position. They buy so much time for the Sunkens to deal their damage. And as soon as he pulls the trigger on that, the ultras are going to come forward. A lot of Scourge come out as well. This is just making such a problem for Light. More ultras coming up here, just dealing that damage. I don't think he can break through here. And as soon as he gets denied, Action is going to win this game beautifully done here by action just tactically so sound such good decision making you can see how strong he is with this style the crazy zerg style the ultralisk rush was done perfectly here i, I think only action could really pull it off like this against light absolutely saying like he's one of the best in the business at executing crazy zerg and he understands it on a fundamental level um better than the average zerg even at the, the, the highest of echelons of play gg finally called from like and yeah we're seeing a three-way split one player from each team taken out saying i have no idea where this week is going to take us but i'm excited for it next up action versus mighty dominator is our map action has the opportunity to all kill. He's the last player who has that option. If he takes out all three Terrans, he will earn that $3,400,000 or $3,400,000 won prize. Imagine $3 million for that all kill. Can you imagine? We might have I think some... a lot of people would be quitting their jobs and just trying to play StarCraft full-time if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, there might be some heart attacks in the studio if it was that much, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, that's life-changing money right there. That's that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But especially if the games get really intense, uh, StarCraft can be one of the most heart-pounding and like you know arousing. I mean, that does, that yeah. sounds wrong, but the you just get so like uh, animated and uh, you know shaky while playing a really intense game of StarCraft. It's like no other. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even on the ladder, if you're playing a particularly intense game, you can you can get those kinds of intense emotions and, and stimuli to your body to have to, to contend with. And at the highest levels of play, these pro games feel it as well, especially when there's money online, especially when the, the games are being televised. And um, you know, there's, there's a lot at stake, not just their pride, but also, you know, prize money and what have you. And uh, it looks like uh, we, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a slowdown, even a pylon block going down here to really frustrate uh, or try to frustrate action. But it looks like a lot of link commitment already out of action, anticipating this potential. So he's going to be able to get the kill on this pylon pretty quickly. One thing I, I've noticed about action is he's very good at um, navigating these early game shenanigans. His, his decision making and the behavior trees that he follows seems to be very solid most of the time. Ooh, a re pylon there to block that once again. Only two lings. If you have only two lings, it won't kill the pylon before it finishes. But with three, you can knock it down. So he's actually going to kill this. He's continuing to build lings, though. And the lings are already arriving here on the other side of the map. He's getting a pretty decent trade to start. Three lings versus one zealot is great. Uh, but as the zealot retreats, he'll get a worse and worse trade in that corner. He manages to pick off one ling action, making a little bit of a mistake there. You really can't be losing lings right now. If you're going to plan to try and overwhelm Mighty in this spot, he's doing a great job so far just blocking up these areas and keeping the lings from dealing damage. Oh, he picks off the one probe, though. Nice block That's there. A big deal. Yeah, he has no idea how many additional lings are being made. So right now, he could just make nothing but drones and not commit to this. And there'd be no way of Mighty knowing uh, what's going on and what's the follow-up here. So two cannons are on the way. Gateway was dangerously low to being knocked out, but so far it looks like Mighty might be able to keep hold of that. I don't see any additional links being made. It looks like it's just going to be drones from now on with a drone set out to take his third base. Yeah, pretty pretty good that Mighty's been able to navigate this early game and, and not take any 
damage here. Looks like the Lynx are still trying to threaten a run by they, and maybe get this, this, this gateway, but there's no way with the cannon warping in now. So looks like any kind of threat is now over. We're going to be seeing a lot of a transition to a normal game, but now the three Zealot move out will force a bit of a reaction out of action here. He has to make Zerglings to deal with this. Um, he hasn't actually identified that the Zealots have left yet. With only one cannon, there's a chance that the Zealots don't move out, which means the Lynx can go for a run by. There was no pros pulled as well, so five Lynx with speed are going to be getting to the main base, which could be crazy. The Zealots are actually turning around. They're not going to be committing to, to any kind of counterattack as well, so this is completely action favored now that the Zealots are not only coming back to help, but are not going to be here for quite some time. Now, a lot of damage already dealt to these probes. Panic cannon was made in the Renault line, which is probably a correct response considering how dire this situation was. You can pretty much just lose the game straight up from here, especially about the Zealots coming in to help very early on. More and more speedlings are being made to see if they can get a run by on this cannon and maybe pick that off in the natural. With only one cannon made on this wall. It's a very easy uh, to exploit, especially with the gateway being low. And the micro of action is pretty solid. He's able to macro back at home very, um, ad very adeptly while still applying a lot of pressure. So I'm not sure if Mighty can keep up with the task switching right now. Action forcing a lot of interactions in this game, trying to exploit his advantage over Mighty and his uh, execution. Does get the pick off on that gateway, which is going to slow down the Zealot production by about three or so if he makes the gateway immediately. And if he does, and it's going to remove even more further Zealot production from the capabilities of Mighty as well as slowing down his tech timings. This is a pretty significant advantage for Action despite having a low drone count. I think Action was going around in the main base there looking for that uh, Cybernetic score and seeing that it wasn't up yet, decided to go for the snipe uh, on the gateway. If you can snipe the, the gateway when the Cyber Core is not done, oh, nice job uh, getting rid of those links now. You can delay the... Uh, the Corsair timing by an insane amount. The tech is just so slow at that point if you manage to do that. But action, I mean, he kills the gateway. He is going to slow down those zealots, but he's not going to slow down the potential Corsair here. Uh, Mighty is slowing that down himself by just not producing that building. He is struggling here to put himself back together after so much damage has gone uh, through from action and this is exactly what we were talking about earlier Shin how action can just turn it on the aggression really really yeah. quickly and deal a lot of damage oh my god cybernetic court no 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 stargate he's gonna go for a dragoon all in i think yeah yeah no this looks, looks like it. it's gonna be like um well it's basically a five dragoon all in five five gate goon all in but because of the economic damage it won't be five gateways it'll be something close to that like three or four um, initially, and then with the oh. added fifth coming on later, but the Overlord sneaking in oh. to scout this. This is kind of crazy. He gets the full scout off. Now everything is seen. Action is so good as well that I imagine he's going to min-max the defense against this, like extremely optimally as well. I do not like Mighty's chances in this. He does uh, force a Dragoon out as well. It is nice to get this Dragoon, especially if you can, but he's not going to pick off the Overlord. That's so frustrating. Just one HP left on the Overlord. Lord. There is another Dragoon that popped out, but with the Lings here, he's a little bit hesitant to go out and hunt down this Overlord because he knows there could be a flood of Lings that just run in as he does that. That was sick. That Overlord getting in and getting absolutely all the information that Action could ever want and then flying out as well. So strong here, Action. I can't imagine him losing this game. He's going to force a bunch of cannons back at home by going in with these mutas. And uh, he can just pump links behind this to hold these dragoons. These dragoons are in such yeah. a low number. There's only a few gateways here producing three gateways instead of the five. Like you mentioned earlier, just makes this such a small threat for action to deal with. And as he shaves off more and more probes here, it's going to be even worse for Mighty. His follow-up dragoon push is going to be slower and it's going to be weaker. And that's all yep. it takes for action to win this game. He just needs to slow things down, get a critical mass of Lings and Mutas, and he should be able to easily take this game home. Yeah, when you scout this build early, you can pr pretty much hold it off with uh, pure mi Ling Muta. It it's totally fine. And Dragoons trade really badly against Mutas. If you made non-stop Mutas against non-stop Dragoons, the Mutas pretty much win every time. They're just not very great. With the explosive damage type against the small air units of the Mutas, they do half damage. They do 20, they do 10. So you don't quite have the, the firepower required to gun down these Mutas and make the trade uh, go your way. We even see a transition coming uh, here from Action 5. 
finally into Hydra's, and uh, now that he's kind of secure, we, we may see a tiny window for Mighty to get something done, but I really doubt it. Like, he's going to have to get really lucky, make a Templar Archives, get an Archon out, somehow trade well against the crazy amount of units that action is going to produce. Maybe maybe there's a way of Mighty winning this game, but it's going to be difficult against the caliber of action, who's just so great in these kinds of situations. Well, tell me if I'm wrong here, but usually when you want to go for a, a Dragoon all-in attack, you're not going to have Templar Archives, and you're actually going to try to hit a moment right before range and speed come in for Hydras when they're just not quite as strong. You can kind of battle them yeah. easily. Um, there is going to be that timing where Hydras are not, uh, you know, quite fully upgraded yet. And we might see Mighty come across the map, but he's delayed this so much. And he has, he, he's trying to get into Archons, like you said, to deal with the Mutas. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we're actually going to buy just barely enough time for action to switch fully into Hydra and have all those upgrades ready. I think so. I was just going to say that um, Mighty might be able to get a tactical snipe on this macro hatchery because it's very difficult to cover that with Sunkens. Um, sometimes you will see Zerg players put Sunkens out in front of their, their Sim City and use the Sunkens as a sandbag for the Dragoon timing. Uh, just with a couple of uh, dra uh, dra uh, Sunkens having to deal uh, with those Dragoons can really uh, help out a lot while you're waiting for your Hydra time uh, tech to finish up. But with only the two cannons of this natural expansion, the Mutas got overwhelmed that very quickly, forced an evacuation on those probes now even just targeting down the nexus and mighty killing his own war to try and get some um dragoons in to do this but as i was saying earlier the dragoons don't really do a lot of damage so there's still a lot of uh, window to maneuver around with these muters and maybe get some high templar snipes and what have you it looks like mighty's actually not even making an archon it's like he might be trying to go into storm here even which is a bit of a gambit i mean he he's not going to have much potency for his army for a little while but there might be a small window for him to exploit if he gets lucky he's kind of banking on action making a mistake though and I don't think action's going to make the kind of mistakes that are going to be required for him to come back into this game interesting decision to go for lurker here with the really yeah. heavy commitment into dragoon early on uh, generally understood not there's no observer yeah yeah the lack of observer definitely makes it a, a much better play but there is going to be that observer being added on now. It's just action diving to the natural was such a smart move. He's delayed things so much and, you know, he forced all these dragoons back once again. And he's going to force, you know, Mighty to wait for the cannons to finish once again. So the cannons finish. Yeah. He's just going to fly right back in, fight the cannons, force everything back. And action is just buying so much time for himself and killing probes every time he comes in like this. Yeah, and, and every time the Zealots and Dragoons come back in to try and deal with the Muters, they block, body block the Templars from even getting in range to cast a Storm. And by the time they are in range, the Muters are already long gone. So really, really high level execution from action, understanding the exact timing windows, when to exploit, when to pull out. He's doing a great job of dotting his eyes, crossing his T's in this game. Also taking a little ninja fourth base as well. Will be quite difficult for Mighty to identify identify and punish this. In the, he looks like he's gearing up to take a third base at the night o'clock it uh, looks like he wants to just try and sandbag this game and slow it down as much as he can and just try and grow from here maybe he can make that work if he's forcing action to come to him but <laughs> action's a very strong macro player he will happily sit back go into defilers and turn this into a 30 minute game if he has to and he will do it with a lot of finesse as well that is such a fast defiler mound we're at nearly 13 minutes and that mound is about to be done the consume upgrade i imagine will be finished before 14 minutes and Defilers will be out in force soon after that. Lurker, Defiler, Crackling is the composition of choice, and it's absolutely the strongest composition for Zerg player. But with this attack coming into the natural right now and going after... Oh my god, he's just going to go right for the Nexus. Oh, he gets it immediately. He's not even going to have to wait for Defilers to come out here. He's already done the critical damage to Mighty that he wanted to, and all these probes being Maynarded back into the main base, trying to return some 
Precious minerals, Mighty loses a ton of those, and Anidas comes up in the bottom right as well. Action is playing this out beautifully. He's giving no sh chances for Mighty to uh, come back in this game at all. Oh, this is a masterclass in ZVP. Like, he's not taking any risks, yeah. Like, th there is, if he played a bit too overly aggressive, then there'd be windows to punish and Mighty to come back into this game. But he's applying, ooh, a pretty pretty nice idea there from Mighty, trying to intercept the Mutas with the Storm preemptively, not quite getting the right vector on that. And uh, yeah, so far Action doing just, even sniping the probe that was there to rebuild the Nexus, like everything is just going right for Action in this game. And he's forcing so many interactions for Mighty to keep up with on, across the board that it's just too much for Mighty to handle. Like Mighty's a very strong, solid player, but he's not quite up to the cal of some of these other pros that are just crazy in their ability to flick around the map. These actions playing over 400 actions a minute right now. He's dancing around the map like a madman. Fingers just like spraying across the keys on the, the board like a wizard right now. It's kind of crazy how he can keep this up pretty much all game long. It's kind of wild. Even the Nexus not being built by Mighty. He's just so low on economy. He can't even afford to produce units and a Nexus right now. He's going to run out of gas in the tank here pretty soon, Sam. This is not a battle, Shun. This is an execution action. <laughs> Going in with the the blade here, about to cut the throat of Mighty. Going right in with the Lings. Going to start to dive into this main base, likely. Going after the Forge. A nice pick off there. We've only got plus wow. one attack for Mighty, and likely plus two armor going to finish off soon. He's breaking him apart piece by piece running in at each base killing off cannons killing off nexus killing off forges and mighty is just struggling to keep up with this guy like you said 420 apm very tough player to keep up with so many interactions over and over and over again mighty is finally gonna pull the trigger in an attack you know he's been delayed so much he was planning to do this uh, all in you know uh dragoon attack very early on in the game but it's now 15 minutes and the dragoons are completely irrelevant with the plague and dark swarm that's being thrown down here at the front yeah, I mean, it looks like right now there's a crazy amount of Protoss units, but look at the supplies. There's a lot of waiting in reserve. He's only utilizing the bare minimal amount of Zerg forces to just lay down some plagues and soften up the enemy target. This really is like a death by a thousand cuts scenario. It makes me wonder if, like, he's got, like, a post-it notes folded up into a fishbowl and, like, he just picks out the post-it note to d decide what kind of play style he wants to go for because he, he really is one of the players, like Hero, that can play a very diverse range of styles and because he's so strong at his macro, it's very intimidating to play against. It's just like Mighty's though going to find another pocket to try and exploit while uh, currently a counter attack's being executed on the 9 o'clock position. Looks like it will be overrun. Looks like most of the probes and the Nexus is going to fall here, saying this might be the death note that's been sent to Mighty right now. Looks like there's going to be a counter attack though from Mighty trying to bust this natural once and for all. There's five Sunkens, a Nidus Canal set up, and but all these Lurkers coming in from behind. Uh, it's a pretty good storm, but I don't think there's enough storm left over in in reserve to keep this uh, going and now those units that killed the nine o'clock gonna be coming in reserve to come help do clean up on aisle five here yeah those uh dragoons are pretty decent at fighting against the uh, sunken colonies but they die so quick after they've been plagued a lot of them end up going down to those five sunkins and the cleanup is easy at the end of that game <laughs> oh my gosh Action beautifully done there, playing a really interesting style that completely countered everything that Mighty tried to do in that game. Rush, the next Terran sent out here to take on Action, and Action's well on his way towards an all kill in this week. It's been a while since we've had an all kill. I actually thought the Shine got the all kill in the sem was yeah. it the semi-final? It really yeah. felt like he deserved it. I mean, he got all four kills. Something went wrong though. I'm not sure what it was. If our translation is off, um, according to the translation we've got for the all kill rules, that definitely should have been one. So we're we're a little bit confused at this point as to what actually constitutes an all kill. So yeah. sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I guess they're saying it, it also includes the revive, which we didn't assume that was the case. Um, so I guess in the semifinals and finals, it's kind of even crazier to get an all kill, right? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, again, according to the translation we've got, it's just four kills in a row in semifinals. So I really don't know uh, when they, I guess, changed that. Maybe they, they made a recent change uh, to those all kill rules. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at keeping up with the announcements from KCM and to what's being changed and, you know, and what's happening and, you know, when uh, the dates are being delayed or whatever or what have you but um that kind of slipped by me um i think that the all kill rules are the same though for the regular season so uh, as long as action manages to take out rush here you'll have to go up against mini if he takes out mini then he takes out sharp he will get that all kill prize it's just a matter of getting through these last three insanely strong players it would be quite the feat here from action yeah i mean i guess it does kind of make sense that you have to kill the revive as well because you think about it you do have to essentially kill five players uh to get an all kill because you're rotating between two squads so i imagine it does i suppose it does make sense having to get the all five in a semi-final format right to make it a little um, it does easier make sense. yeah there are a little little more uh, yeah, it would be a bit too easy, maybe, in the semifinals, is what you're saying? And yeah, in I think comparison so. to a regular. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, in hindsight, it actually does make sense. Yeah. Well, let's jump into this game here. Rush has opened with a one Rax expansion. He's gone into a very quick eBay, so he'll be sitting behind this wall just kind of chilling waiting for it that power spike with the plus one range and stim all lining up here at the end um it, it leaves a little bit of room for some abuse from the hmm. from the zerg player but you're gonna have a way stronger mid game and as long as you have the turrets on time and you, you know you've got your marines in the right positions as the meters fly in it should be fine and Rush is absolutely capable of that. He's adept with that. He's managed to pull off this type of build before, so no reason to think that Action will be able to get in there and deal any significant damage this time. Yeah, I think the one, one of the weird reasons this build is actually quite good is that one of the things that's good against it is two hatch lurker can punish this a little bit and you don't really see two hatch lurker almost ever unless it's some crazy cheesy zerg on the ladder or something so i i feel like yeah you usually don't see zergs go for styles that are able to punish this too effectively unless it's like some kind of like you know very early ling timing or something um but usually with a wall in like this it's very difficult for the zerg to punish so i, I imagine most of the time this is probably the build of preference for most Terrans if they are able to get like a secure wall in what have you. I think one of the hidden strengths of this build uh, that a lot of people don't talk about is actually the timing of the plus one armor that comes out for, for the Terran player. You can get right. that armor right as the lurkers are coming out and then it makes it harder for the lurkers to fight marines it takes three shots instead of two and you can actually bust through a lot of different positions that would otherwise be impossible to get through um with that extra little bit of armor uh, helping the marines no. to smash those positions so that's like uh something i haven't really heard anyone else talk about but it might be the reason why this build has come into such prominence I also think that with two racks, you're, it allows you to kill the third base on location before the muters can save it sometimes, but it's very difficult to locate where the third base is. So even if you do go for two racks, it can be hard to shut down this kind of style from action where you see the on base location third as well. So it does kind of make sense that this build is the preferred one um, out of the two. Uh, it does line you up way, way better for that um, mid game, I would say. Um, with with the the caveat of not having as much pressure in the early game to do to the zerg but uh, maybe on the ladder you'd want to go for a two racks academy if you're not as confident um but yeah i feel like this maybe is overall the superior cookie cutter out of those two options now we see the muirs making their way into the main base well, a lot of turrets already made in the main base can be difficult to exploit there is a little bit of a pocket where the ebay is to kind of shave away at some of the scvs but that means the muirs are also trapped in here they will take damage on the exit looks like now rush wants to just put a lot of pressure on push out onto the map make sure that there's no greed here make sure that there's a lot of uh, sunkens being made behind these muirs as well and he's thinking about where this third base is he scans the nine he scans the natural uh 
in the top left, and he's not able to find this uh, 12 o'clock base. Very interesting choice from action here. I don't imagine he'll scout that until one of the later options out of all the bases he'll check. I love the one Marine just walking off on his own up to the top left-hand corner <laughs> to just check things out. He used his yeah. two scans on the center left in the top left, the natural. And as soon as he sees this base, I, I, I feel like this is a brilliant play from action, actually, because he showed uh, in that last game versus light uh, that he was willing to not play, uh, you know, to, to play just like two base and go right into mm. hive that rush might actually be thinking that's exactly what he's, see, you know, going up against here. Yeah. And yeah. without and he, the ability to scout, yeah, he, he could just assume that. And this will just go completely unscouted. He won't know about this. Action's going to be in a great spot. Yeah, and Action's... And there is a Marine that's stimming out. He's trying to dash into the top right corner now to check for a third base. He's going to be scratching his head when he sees that there's nothing up here as well. He does manage to stim again before being taken down too much HP to get off. He does actually see that there's no hatchery building in the top right, so he may even still commit a scan to that. It's possible. Um, would be really crazy if Rush doesn't figure this out, uh, exactly what's going on, because it may really mess up his build order min-maxing if he's assuming that this might be a two-base... Uh, very fast um, hive timing here and instead it's actually um, going to be a three base hive timing it might really throw things off in his calculations so far action doing a pretty good job of deceiving him and I mean now he can even start to fortify this base at 12 so even if he does scout it he can still say oh there's four marines moving up into position Mewers are hot on their tail though one marine is kind of buying time for the and so that the others can get in there and get one of these two of these drones up here but Looks like that's not going to transpire, not even get a single drone, does identify the transition with the Hydras now coming out to make Lurkers. Only two Sunkens that are finished up in this natural expansion, with no Lurkers yet on the waist. There is a pretty big window to exploit here before this third Sunken finishes. He may pull the trigger. Ooh, this is really scary, this moment. We've all been through it as a Zerg player. Uh, if you played Zerg, you practice Zerg. This is when a lot of Zerg players will die. Uh, Jadong, one of the players who often falls to little attacks like yeah. this right before the Lurkers finish, is a perfect mom moment to bust through. Now, I haven't seen a click on those Marines just yet, but they should have plus one armor by now. Armor will just be finishing up. Okay, it's not quite done yet, but it will be finished here in just a moment, and the Lurkers are not quite done. This is like the perfect opportunity for Rush to break through. He's actually building tanks right now. So he's going to try and push maybe the natural. And yeah. Yeah, this play has been really, really strong and really popular uh, with Terran players recently. Another dive into the main base. And this time he's come fully loaded with all the mutilus he needs to break these turrets. Now dealing a lot of damage back here. And the uh, Marines do not have medic support right now. These Marines are just going to get cleared out and actually going to continue to stay and deal more damage. A Defiler's on the way, but it's not quite here yet. Lurkers are done. Will Rush be able to break through? Because he kind of has to with how much damage he's taken back at home. Yeah, this pocket in the main base is very exploitable for action with this commsat and depots blocking marines getting in here. It's very easy to get them choked up into a nice, easily killable line. So doing maximum damage with minimum effort here. Now going to be just uh, retreating home, happily uh, churning away on these three bases. He knows as long as he take any damage, he's fine. But there's going to be a little bit of timing here for these tanks, although he's cutting these muters out here to try and see if he can get a snipe on one of these tanks. He might get one of these tanks, not quite getting the connection there, unfortunately. That would have been great if he could just take out... Uh, like 33% of the DPS of those tanks is kind of crazy. It takes them so much longer to chew through those sunkens. And every second is precious when you've got um, Defilers finishing up with uh, Consume on the way. He just spot the dropship as well. I think he did caught it. I think he did catch it with um, the Mewers. They're going to be hunting that down as well. So kind of everything going right for action at this phase of the game thus far. It's looking a little bit awkward for Light. Yeah, Rush just loses that dropship. Man, that is so painful. There's the Consume. It's already too late. Rush is in such a bad spot, and action is looking great right now. He's going to go ahead and consume one of those eggs so that he can throw down a Dark Swarm at that front. And this tank push has been absolutely shut down. The drop has been shut down. The tank push has been shut down. The damage has been dealt in the main. Rush is limping right now, and action is in such a good position. The only problem is it's going to be tough to get a, f a fourth base here for action. He's, you know, taking this really sneaky 
location up in the top center that worked out very well for him. But where do you take a fourth? It's it's going to be right. tough. There's a lot of bases around this map. Oh, a greater Spire's on the way right now. That's crazy. Well, a lot of damage from this Irradiate. Oh my god, so much damage. But that's going to be fine. These uh, Mutas are going to be made into uh, a bunch of Guardians over on this side of uh, pretty soon. So, you know, the fact that they've been all damaged is actually going in Action's favor right now. He's just going to make these into Guardians and... Uh, they will recover that HP. I'm hoping Light senses this and scans this position. The muters, he knows the muters are hiding there, and it's kind of weird if they are not seen anywhere else. So if his spidey senses are tingling, he will know to scan that or at least start to prepare for that. You can start to make wraiths in advance if you've got enough of a timing window. If not, you're kind of just forced to rely on Marines and Irradiates, and that's not ideal. So this is a lot of pressure that's going to be applied to him, and all his forces are currently at the front, so it's going to be very difficult to come back. Okay, even a devourer being made just in case there was a, a wraith play after scanning and identifying that so every everything's being prepared for by action and he's even getting a snipe on that vessel that's kind of crazy it's, it's gonna be so long for him to chew through all these sunkens and the fact that the defilers are already there it, it's just gonna be a crazy mountain for rush to climb in this game now action tried to get some scourge over to those guardians to actually help them out a little bit but uh, Rush did manage to shut that down. He managed to prevent that from happening. Um, the Devourer there is going to help out a lot, though. Oh, God, Rush didn't see that coming. He was too busy uh, paying attention to the Guardians over here, and he loses a big chunk of those Marines, and now it's such a small army. GG is called action, taking wow. it with the Guardian play to finish things off. Really, really well played. Tactical victory here from action. And everything from start to finish there just went exactly as planned for action. Action firing on all cylinders today. He's in the zone right now. His next opponent will be Mini spawning in the bottom right. Action here, top left. This is probably the best map for Mini to come out again against Action, I think. Um, if you get my drift, like this is yeah. this is a crazy map. We're on Monty Hall. There's so much room for uh, abuse and craziness. <laughs> yeah, from uh, the Protoss here, I Absolutely. really think that Mini will be able to uh, find a way to abuse action and maybe get a quick win. I haven't seen a probe get sent out yet, so maybe, you know, we're not going to see quick gateway across the map or anything like that, but... He could absolutely go for something wild here. Like, what, what are the chances that we get, you know, reverse air or something in this position? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's pretty common on semi-island maps, I will say, uh, reverse air. This map does become very open once the lanes have become mined out. It, it just becomes like a free lane, normal 1v1 map with two island bases in the top right and bottom left. But until those bases are mined out, it's a crazy, like, shenanigan fest um, of, like, whatever your your nightmarish mind can conjure no matter how devilish you are you can always think of some new ways of playing on a map like this and you have to, you have to be super confident and um players like action and mini are great in very obscure uh, bizarre situations they've got great problem solving um skills and they're also quite i would say i'm not sure what the exact word for it is, but it's almost like they've got like an intuition for how to play in awkward position sometimes so i think yeah mini's the, the probably the best choice to bring out against action but i still like action's chances here i feel like he'll navigate this map extremely adeptly and he's already going for a very fast triple hatchery before pool play which is going to work out nicely because it's going to be a nexus first here from mini in the bottom lane wow a macro play on monty hall that's a shock yeah. we haven't seen one of those yet uh, i wonder how this will play out uh, well, CVP, it, it's it's this you, surprising. When this when this map first came out, this was what was um, thought of to be how you approached the, the map. It was thought of that these lanes were too frustrating to deal with in the early game to get like rushes and cheeses going, that this was the way to play, was to go for a macro build. And that's what also made the, the cheese plays even stronger because you'd have a guy like just trying to play a normal straight up macro game and the other guy's doing some really crazy, well-prepared cheese that absolutely floors him. And uh, it looks like we're going to be going back to the, the times of old where people figured out that this map was great for macro cheeses. 
and uh, neither player going for anything aggressive thus far. We could have seen a little bit of a cannon rush action here, um, but there's there's just no way of like knowing for sure that um, that would even work. And with, with the geometry, like there's no and against someone of action's caliber, like it'd just be too awkward to go for that with a nexus first. So both players going to be doing pretty much nothing but macro for the time being. I'm curious what the follow up here is going to be from Mini though. Is he going to go really tech heavy and do something like a Reva Ser, or is he just going to try and like do an early um, push timing here down this bottom lane now that he knows that action's expanded here? Yeah, I'm very curious how this will play out. The third base is kind of on an island, but it could be easily turned into another attack path if Mini decides to just send four probes uh, to just long distance mine that one patch. As long as he pays attention and makes sure that they are all mining the same patch, he'll break through that really, really quickly. And then he'll have that defensive wall to, to shore up his back line, right? He, he's got the wall yep. with the cannons. They can attack down a different path. It's complicated here as a Zerg player to hold on. And, you know, Mini can make it more so by just opening up more lanes and giving himself more attack paths. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it was a Nexus first does kind of slow down his Stargate a little bit here. And it does seem like Action's not going to go for like a hatchery heavy style, like a four hatchery before um, gas kind of like macro play. It's just going to be a standard build order, but with a bit of greed early on. So I think this still lines up nicely. I imagine one or two overlords will fall to the initial Corsair, maybe just one. A Jakun was made here, interestingly, um, maybe to try and see if he can deny any kind of scouting into the main base here. Could be quite critical to deny him vision of what exactly is going to be the, the tech choice of the pros. A lot of lings are being made for action right now. There's only one Zell and two cannons. He can actually go for a bust here, saying this looks like this might actually be over for Mini right here, right now. This is the same build that he did versus Mighty. He went for the speed before layer, and he's using it to just eviscerate this frontal base. The pro pull was really, really good here, and he's keeping this Zealot surrounded. But as soon as that goes down, probes are going to start to fall so quickly. Uh, he's actually got to target those down because the Dragoon is going to take aggro, but. He's doing a really good job of killing off a ton of probes and putting himself in a good position. Now, you are totally right that uh, several overlords are probably going to go down with this Corsair being so early. I mean, it's, you know, 5 minute 40 Corsair already starting to hit overlords. That's quick. And with the, the build that Action's done, he's delayed his Spire by quite a bit. So he might lose even like two, three overlords. We'll see how yeah. much of a supply block Action ends up getting. He spent a lot on Lings and he's killed quite a few probes. It's hard to know exactly where you're at in this game. And it's, it's hard for us to even tell as an observer. <laughs> yeah, I would say a slight edge to Action though. I would say even though the damage wasn't as critical as I thought it would be, I thought maybe he was just going to absolutely annihilate Mini right there right then um but yeah looks like some great pro positioning gonna be clutching on for dear life there and uh now the transition is going to be coming out from action more of a normal game here like uh, a free base style he has got three gases though so it looks like this is going to be an air superiority situation and we're going to be seeing a lot of muters and a lot of scourge being made trying to overwhelm the protoss player before the tech can fully come online here was this actually speed first? I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I need to find out those timings exactly when the speed is supposed to finish uh, in a regular, uh, you know, Spire first build, but I'll take a look at that later. Um, I think in the last game, though, he definitely went for speed first because Mighty was completely taken, up at, taken off guard. I think that Mini also here taken pretty off, uh, off guard by that sudden uh, wave of lings coming in. And now in this position, yeah, you're definitely right. Action is for certain favored. And we've got Sunkins out in the front. Action's ready for a counterattack, but Mini's not even ready to try and attack. Oh, there's the ro uh, the, the yeah. extra um, sorry, robotic so. support bay. Reaver's Sarah gonna be the choice. A base coming up on the center right. Is that gonna be shut down by these mutas though? If it does end up getting shut down, um, that's the real big, like, uh, difficulty with Reverse Air is if you can't get into the base online, oh man, all the Corsairs start to go down. We've only got two left. It means Mutas can actually kind of fight this. Another couple of Scourge coming in, but the Corsairs have nowhere to escape to. I'm gonna do their best to kind of micro around here and deal as much damage as he can. That was a great dodge there with those Corsairs, but... 
Only one remains and more Scourge are going to come up here. The shield battery is not going to be enough. GG action takes out Mini and brings us to the final versus Sharp. What an incredible performance by him. The timings here are so sharp and that uh, aggressive action style coming out. Showing his true colors, the first kill there on Mighty with the Ling attack, the Ling stab here against Mini, and then straight into Mutalisk aggression. Dude, this guy does not play sharp. The final bump in the road here for action on his journey to that all kill prize. You can almost taste it at this point, but he's got to make sharp take the l on kickback it's a tough tough sell this player who's already seated he made it into the round of four last season had an amazing performance just barely got taken down uh, in those semi-finals so you know this guy is like basically the best terran player in the world right now um the only one to make in the round of four last season. He is like, he's the big boy right now. He's the he's the big one to be watching out for, even though Light and Rush are so, so good. Right. You know, the power levels of these players rise and fall throughout the seasons, yeah. the different years, and Sharp is hitting a peak right now. You guys better keep your scouters on and keeping an eye on these guys because it's never quite for certain who's going to come out on top. And some some of these guys have got like, you know, crazy lives going on and they can't quite commit as many hours to practice. So some of these guys take the game way more serious than ever. Some, some of them like eat, sleep and breathe StarCraft all day, every day. Some of them don't. Some of them are like, you know, they, they got all this a social life going on or wives or kids to worry about. So some of the players can't quite put in the kind of hours as they would like to so sometimes you do see uh players uh, end up outranking one another depending on how much time they can commit to the game or you know these other kind of factors that are at play especially the psychological element that you see in live tournaments uh, can be a big factor as well you never really know how someone stacks up against someone for sure you better keep your scours on for that guys oh cancels the gas okay so it's like uh, Sharp going to be adapting here and uh, going for a fast expand build. We see a three hatchery before pull from action. He's not messing around today, saying he, he wants to go go big or go home. My eyes just about popped out of my head when I saw that action just went three base right off the bat. I mean, this is kind of what you expect on a map like this, but because this is what you expect, you can expect to get punished for that, right? And Sharp Absolutely. is the guy to punish you. I can't believe that Action is going for this play, but it, I, it's really going to pay off here because Sharp unfortunately sent his over or his uh not his overlord his SCV in the wrong direction, and he's found himself in a position where he can't really punish this one sunken colony will hold off everything. He hasn't built that yet, and he doesn't have any links here, so th two, three marines are going to come across the map and try to put some pressure on, but I don't think he can do anything with this. I mean, maybe he gets one drone kill. That's like absolute best case scenario, maximum amount of damage you could possibly get, but most likely these links will just die without really getting, or these marines will just die without getting anything. Yeah, and he's fighting onto a high gun right now, so the drones actually can get a bit of a trade advantage. He can recycle, uh, cycle out the low HP drones back to mining, so it's actually, he doesn't oh even need gosh. links to defend against these marines from that low to high transition here. This is what I love about action, is he understands the, the game and the geometry, everything so well that he knows how to get away with the bare minimum, and he always walks the tightrope so perfectly, and that's why he's such a strong macro player, because he's able to survive these crazy situations with the absolute bare minimum here, and uh, you love to see it like a player firing in all cylinders like this saying and it looks like he might go all the way and get that all kill prize at this rate i hate to say it but i think you're right i don't think we you know we may not end up getting a, a final game here jadong sitting on the bench might not get his opportunity to shine uh because no. action is playing just so damn good and i mean the the hold there on the high ground was so impressive with those drones not taking any damage and killing those marines with only making four lings i mean his position is so good whatever he decides to go for here is going to be strong and 
He's had so many good ideas in this series already. I'm very interested to see what he'll pull out with this big macro edge and on kickback there are some little caveats to that right he's got this these bases up so early that they are going to mine out really really fast we don't have a lot of gas a lot of minerals at each of these bases 3000 gas at each uh at each Vespian geyser and 1200 minerals at each mineral patch so they really do mine out quickly we're going to have a big explosive action here pretty soon and then it's probably going to die down for a bit as he tries to get another uh, third or get a, get a fourth base out excuse me he starts an evolution chamber though again Shin, you're getting your wish we're having action <laughs> play his crazy zerg style and one great thing about having this hatchery up really early as well is that there are three locations you have to scan in order to find out where that uh, tech is and right. we just saw sharp scan two bases he missed the tech completely he has no no idea what's coming yeah it's gonna be that much harder for him to min max his build order to set up to fight this later with uh having delayed information on that it's i'm like a kid in a candy store honestly when i see players play the way i want them to play I, I, it's, it's such a treat um we will obviously see like uh, a lot of mutilisks come out from action as well now that he's mining up these three gases there'll be a lot more mutilisks than usual afforded to him even though it's a slower timing initially he's now going to go up to a very potent amount of muters to get a lot of map control going and also set himself up for counterattack opportunities uh, it will be difficult for him um to hold on to additional bases if he can't like keep the air superiority going and keep shaving off marines but as soon as you get a small advantage you're, you're, you're sitting pretty he does want to come in here and ideally kill about five or six scvs though even though you're going crazy zerg you kind of want to shave off a little bit of the terran's economy to see that's what he's doing now he wants to shave off just a little bit of the scvs as he can just to put himself into that much more of a comfortable position he's pretty much done that he's gone in he's killed like five or six scvs and then he's gone on the exit now he knows he's pretty much set up uh, economically no matter what happens as long as he doesn't get sunk and busted here yeah that was beautifully done sharp keeping all of his turrets together uh, to make sure that that area can't get busted that was actually what i was afraid of that action would come in just kill the turrets and then take over the high ground and getting your marines up that ramp is an absolute nightmare so uh, having all the turrets together is a good choice but it allows action to get the exact amount of economic damage that he needs like six scvs ended up yep. going down during that and now he can just chill he doesn't need to really do anything just get those sunken colonies out keep his upgrades rolling get that uh, hive going keep the mutilus active see if he can catch like a dropship or anything coming out Oh, he's even going to come back in and get a few more SCV kills. It's just icing on the cake right now because his plan is in full effect. Yeah, it's just a pretty uh, well executed from him as well. And this this slows down the Terran so much. Like he he's he's got, he's gone for four racks as well, which gives you enough Marines to fight the mutas usually and come out onto the map. But he's got Marines out on the map that are not really going to accomplish anything. That they're going over to an expansion right now that's not even yet being taken. He will actually uh, hide the drone up there at the uh, high ground base and take it up there. I think maybe just sneak the drone into a yeah. He's going to tuck the drone as far down as he can to see if he can get away with making this later if he sees that there's no hatcheries being made up here i'm not even sure he'll track down that drone um oh i think he actually saw the drone he's gonna did he no I I don't... he's leaving a marine there uh to to make sure that a base doesn't come up no. but he didn't see the drone drone's still alive but it can't really take a base right now um action of course he needs to get a fourth eventually but he's pretty okay right now you can see 1300 gas in the bank that's yeah. quite a lot to dump into ultras when that's ready i mean the only real play you can go from here as terran is like a, a dropship gambit but if you don't have if you don't fight the muters well enough there's no chance of that happening because the muters can just shut down the drop play too easily so there's no real easy path for sharp to venture down here and the muters will keep coming into this pocket where the ramp is because you need bio to come up here because it will force a lot of lost mining time um with the scvs running to the safety of those turrets over and over again so it does pin back most of the bio coming out to reinforce this as well and there's no way he'll have enough to sunk and bust as well looks like the ninja expansion is going to go down in the top left since this drone is going to be finally taken out by this marine um yeah this is looking pretty rough for sharp like action is at the moment playing him like a fiddle
Some of you guys might think it's dishonorable to take a hidden base like this, a ninja expansion going up in the top left-hand corner. This is exactly how you play yep. Crazy Zerg. You have to start throwing up bases all over the map and creating just problems for the Terran player to deal with. And eventually one of those bases will come up. You'll get a Nidus there and then you'll be able to hold that spot. Ultras are going to be made here shortly and we might even see Guardians too because the Greater Spire finished once again. I hope that Action's not going to waste too much gas though on Guardians. If he wants to, you know, get a big round of Ultras out, this, these gases are not going to last too much longer. Okay, it's actually Guardians for the defense. We don't have yes. tanks pushing in right now, but... And with this many sunk... I, I think this is maybe a, an overcommitment to the defense here. Action being really scared about Sharp busting him right now. Yeah, he's, he's taking the game extremely seriously. Like, he's trying to remove any possibility of actually losing the game. Um, this does require a lot of investment, like you say, but it does guarantee total safety. And he's, he's able to make... He's made, like, three Guardians over here on the left to apply a little bit of pressure. These won't really do much besides, like, draw the ire of some irradiates. Has got Zerling to stop any annoyance in this top left so we can start making drones up there. But now the, the Bible is going to move into position to shut down this this third in the top left. But that does open up um, action to, sorry, open up sharp to a counter attack from action. These uh, Guardians, even though they were made defensively initially, they will now be able to go onto a bit of a uh, attack warpath here to this third base that's trying to go up from sharp and slow that down and be uh, a bit of an issue because once he starts committing a lot of these irradiates to cleaning up all these guardians there won't be much left over for the ultras that come out soon after that but these guardians do have to get a little bit of work done because like you say pretty big gas investment still i'm not a big fan of this honestly i feel like it could still work but uh, investing all that money well, into Ultras might have been a better call. Now, he's going to start to bait out these uh, Irradiates. Of course, forcing those out is pretty good. The Guardians on the high ground are going to take great trades against the Marines that are trying to come up here. Uh, it's pretty hard to clear this, but if we just get a couple of Wraiths out now, there's really no other anti-air to, to help out these Guardians. So, I mean, this is, this is some damage. We're doing something here, but as long as I think Sharp keeps roaming the map and actually finding the bases, there's one more coming up at top center, another one over in center right. But as long as he keeps on shutting down bases, I think Sharp should be okay here. They were just about to run out of mineral, or uh, we're just about to run out of gas, actually, at the third uh, and na the uh, second base as well, which is, is kind of crazy. I, I hope we get a click on that uh, extractor here soon, because those are running out very fast, and the radiates are cleaning up all these guardians. Yeah, but I really do feel like in this next phase, I feel like action, he's playing it the most, like, safest way possible, which does really slow down his explosion of ultras, but I feel like he's still going to be okay in this game. I, it, it does open him up now for Sharp to maybe start to figure out a way of coming back in this game. I just think it's very difficult for him to shut down these expansions. He's even, and committing into Wraiths to help clean up the Guardians just slows down the, the, um, the vessel production even more. There's not a a lot of vessels out on the map with a lot of energy so as action starts to just drizzle out more and more of these um ultralists onto the map it's going to be very difficult for sharp um once sharp can take his third base he might be able to like stabilize a little bit and action will be mined out on these uh expansions relatively quickly but there will be enough um gas left in the tank for action to go kind of crazy pun intended in the next few minutes he will be able to churn out a lot of ultras while avoiding any head-on engagements Oh, I think this Wraith is going to scout the top center. He didn't know about this until Ooh. just now. This is a really big scout here, seeing that base. Um, he can actually get up there and maybe shut that down. Ultralist counterattack is a big threat right now. There's nothing here in the natural action. Gonna, is he going to do it again? Is he going to win off of an ultra counterattack? That's potential. Has a lot of potential. He turns around. I'm kind of shocked that he decided to turn here. Yeah. Great irradiates on some of those Scourge and the Ultras, of course, and Sharp going to kill off the base that's easier to get into uh, here first. There's not a lot of defense uh, in the center right, so he kills that. Kill the drones, kill the, uh, the extractor as well, and then maybe head up towards 12 o'clock. Now, I I'm serious, guys. We are about to run out of gas at the natural and the third. 
And once those gases mine out, I mean, we're going to be back on like two gas for a little bit as the, the top center starts to mine hmm. and the main base starts to mine gas. But then, uh, like that's, that's only going to last for a little longer because the main will eventually mine out as well. Great job bringing in the Scourge here with the Ultras, getting a pretty good surround on all of this. Oh man, I think that every single vessel going down is a pretty big loss here for Sharp. He's going to go for an irradiate, irradiate trick, eraser trick here uh, on the top center to try and uh, stop action from mining at that base, at least for a little while. He's going to get a lot of drones. Look at all the drones going down here to this eraser trick. But he lost his entire bulk of army when it comes to those marines and medics and he yeah. lost most of his vessels as well this is a pretty big slowdown for sharp is really going to be hurting here going into this next phase he is also going to start to mine out on his natural and third and that's going to cause a lot of problems here for sharp in just a moment he's starting to remacro out all these marines but this is just not enough of a force to deal with all the ultras that are on the field right now yeah, as soon as you saw action run away with his counter attack, he, that was him like completely changing the way he wanted to play this game. He's going to go in full macro mode. He will only probably engage out on the map now and will just keep expanding and trying to out macro sharp out on the map. He will no longer probably try to counter attack. He'll just try and swallow up these armies. Oh, that's a beautiful manual surround with these forces as well. And the, the ultras and lings in front will help uh, body block this bioforce from getting to anywhere kind of safety. This reminds me of that scene in like Game of Thrones where like um, the hounds like saying to the Brienne like safety where the fuck's that you know there's just nowhere that's safe on this map for Sharp to come out here unfortunately. The Marines are still being pumped out here but the ultra number continues to grow five armor to attack as well. It's hardly even necessary for these ultras but it'll help the lings to deal a little bit of extra damage uh, whenever these fights happen and action is just out of control at this point he's ahead in supply and although those extra gases have run out uh in the the natural in the third he's got more bases popping up all over the place and those ga gas numbers are going to start to rise gonna take another fight here at the natural looks like action may actually run by no he's just kind of threatening here gonna force the the army to retreat for a moment uh, Sh Sharp is going to push out eventually with a big enough army to take a fight, but how many more Ultras are going to be on the field by that time? Some more gas is coming in now over at the top left. Sharp is pushing forward. Only 40 gas in the bank for action. He really can't produce much Ultras right now, and look at how slowly that's actually going up. Has action kind of run out of fuel here? He's got only a few ultras. He's going to go for a counterattack. Okay, here we go. That's been spotted. That one marine actually making a huge difference because he might be able to block with some buildings at the front. If he manages to yeah, land maybe. something in the wall, that would be really big. No, he doesn't have anything in the wall. Oh, uh, God. This is bad. The counterattack yeah, could he, just end the game right here, right now. I mean, he is going to kill these two bases in the top left, so it does kind of put the game into a weird state. If he can somehow hold on to this attack and not take too much damage back at home, it's kind of a wild game right now. Sharp, he has still got a pretty big standing army out on the map, so if he can kill these bases, deal with this attack, and start to put the pressure on again maybe he can turn this around into a victory but it's a little bit annoying right now because he's kind of got a lot of fires that he has to put out and a lot of the spinning plates are going to start coming crashing down for the terran player back at home since he can't stabilize against this threat it looks like at the time being and there are more and more zerglings being flooded in to help get into the, the nooks and crannies of this sim city to help clear out all the buildings and with that adrenal upgrades clear, killing these buildings so quickly is action just like sharp pulling the trigger coming into this 12 foot base only four sunkens currently online with a fifth being made but eventually these marines will chew through that with their upgrades with ease take out this expansion and then be relocated elsewhere to see if they can maybe uh, end the game but he's just taken so much damage to his economy that if he doesn't win with this army right here right now he's basically dead gg action takes it home what an incredible performance here today gets the all kill prize cumulatively that's been growing over several seasons. Three million won goes into his pocket. What just so well deserved here. Action played magnificently here tonight. 
He takes home this week of KCM and that all-kill prize. He's got to be feeling great. Big smile on his face right now as he carries his squad. Jadong, with his feet up on the desk, won't even have to play today. Wow, and so this week of KCM ends with a bang there. Action taking out his final opponent, Sharp, who we talked up a lot at the beginning of that game, but who kind of fell flat in defending against Action's a pretty crazy Zerg style. Yeah, I was anticipating him like keeping the science facility floating above the wall so he could keep rewalling whenever he needed to, but he eventually relocated that. Um, a little bit shocking, honestly. I actually thought for a moment it was going to go to like pretty late game where he was going to be okay on three bases and then we were going to see more and more bases sprout up for action and we were going to see a bit more of a slog of just them fighting for map control. But yeah, like I'm, action has just been firing all cylinders today. Really impressive performance, and that's now reflected in the points that you see. Zerg with four, Terran two, Protoss zero, flatlining at the moment, while the other two races are trying to reach uh, the outer orbit here. Zerg on a very good trajectory. It uh, looks like their rocketry is uh, slightly more advanced than the other two teams thus far. It's easy to forget, but bisu had a pretty good performance early against shine and light pulled out a pretty great game versus bisu yeah. and both of them performing pretty well but action really star of the show here stealing away that limelight and performing completely out of his mind um i would have loved to see an action versus bisu game though so unfortunately we didn't get to see that here um, maybe Bisu would have been capable of taking action down. Definitely Mighty wasn't up so. to the task. Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, Bisu would have had way more of a chance. Um, his style as well lines up with action way better than um, Mighty's does. It's just unfortunate, but it is what it is. You, sometimes you just get a player that plays out of their mind one week. You know, we were sulky last week. Now it's action. It happens, and sometimes, especially that, it seems to be a theme for the Zerg squad. There's like one ace player that kind of keeps the hive mind together, and the others are just lending them their energy or something. Yeah, with a spirit that's, bomb. <laughs> that's all Jadong was uh, good for this week. Just hanging back, you know, moral support in the chat, maybe uh, giving action some pointers. But at this point, I think it's it's time for Jadong to take some pointers from action. This guy is on fire right now, uh, and definitely big brain as well. Like the the absolute girth on the brain of this man is crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's been performing yeah, I can't, so well. I can't stress enough just how immense his ability is to identify game states. It, the, it, we as casters see pretty much the entire entirety of the board and we are still struggling to figure out exactly what's going on. He's seeing half of the board and knows almost exactly what's going on. It's kind of crazy when you can do that at this caliber of play as well. Only a few players are usually able to do that consistently. And uh, it's nice to see when, when a guy is actually like in his A game and is able to bring that star sense to the forefront and show you just what these guys are made of. I wonder if we're going to see action play Crazy Zerg in the, the SSL. I feel like it would be a missed opportunity if he did do that. But you know, during, so. during the SSL, every single season, uh, ASL, SSL, uh, things get quite heated uh, during the, that season in KCM because players are hiding their builds. Uh, they're looking for the, those little mental edges as well. If you're able to take down a player in the KCM with kind of a crazy build, maybe they might expect that, or they might you know, have like a little bit of that in the back of their head uh, that might torment them. They, you, you might be able to you know, get a leg up over that opponent because of what happens in the KCM. So it's it's important here what happens and action i mean he's just going to be glowing with confidence going into the next round of the ssl and we're going to be back again after that next round next week guys friday once again uh it's just so jam-packed with action so much starcraft going on right now yeah. we really appreciate guys coming to hang out in the kcm as well uh, keeping up with this series while all that 
you know, premier tournament stuff's happening at the same time. So thank you for joining us today. Shun, any last words before we head out? It's been a pleasure and a privilege to bring you these games, guys, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next time.
Max, this is really for fast when you even if you are so see the have no sin your machine I'm see. Oh, the loss of not the hell is gonna hazy or rooks did. Swerve we fit up, you know, I'm getting my insults. You're not gonna tell part of it, and I'm your slits. Net law, that. Even after the sin, I'm your slits. Yeah, I'll learn from you, Maxi, if you're off. This time was. You're off, see, let's see. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
No laugh, wait, no, I don't guys and girls on my air run a scenario that would like, so I always do it. Love me, I'm a new spark, and then and this is not to do spark, girls, air cell, fifty killer elves, other for the fur, but uh, they're fun. Or stand in the good girls, no, and you can awake a lot of cat, yeah, that's not here, and our voice likes must not go to every day, yeah. で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、
No, I mean, our max is next to but let's see if you're three is not. Yeah, we'll laugh at that and all. Yeah, we'll all. No, I agree. Yeah, I'll be. The dates are not even looking at her. See if you're three. Yes, please look at this. Not her, sure. Yeah, I'm not all. Yeah, 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 yeah,